So welcome to TEACH, everybody. This is day two, and we have just been through a fabulous school visit at Payne Elementary School with the incomparable First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, and lots of the different staff that are here and kids that are here, including Principal Stephanie Bird. I want to hear you shout out, Principal. <laughs> Vice, <laughs> Vice Principal Steve SK. Where's Steve? I thought he was here. And Head Custodian Joey Abney for pulling this off because after all, it is the second day of summer school. And to actually have the First Lady of the United States of America in your school the second day of summer school, that's pretty, not, yes, I know it's pretty awesome, but it's also pretty stressful. So <laughs> thank you, Payne Elementary, for doing this. And, and, and for us, we had this lovely visit in a couple of classrooms, we saw Mr. Kreef's robotics class, and we saw Miss Baggett and Miss Hicks's pre-K class. And that's, frankly, as I said in my speech yesterday to all our teachers out there, that's who we are and what we do. And we want to be back in school and creating the safe and welcoming environment. And I should also say that part of what and part of who I want to thank is we also have with us the chancellor of the DC schools, Chancellor Farabee, and the, we can clap for the chancellor. And we also have the head of the Washington Teachers Union, Jackie Polk Lyons. And, and we also have the two other officers of the AFT and the, Vice President of the WTU in this beautiful classroom that we are in um, as part and parcel of welcoming everybody to this, again, to this professional development conference. I do want to say thank you to the Chancellor and to Jackie because this is now the second school we've been in in Washington, D.C. since we've pretty much been back since April and the work that both of you have done to make the schools in D.C. Self safe and welcoming, and the work the mayor has done to actually get us vaccines before the President of the United States made it clear how we needed to vaccinate teachers. I just really want to say thank you to Mayor Bowser, thank you to Chancellor Farabee, and thank you to you, um, WTU President Jackie Polk. Lions. Thank you very, very much. So I get to introduce to our teachers the First Lady of the United States of America. And I want to do it in a couple of ways. Number one, one of the things we just saw in this summer school was the American Rescue Plan funding at work because this is a place and a summer school for kids to both learn and have fun. So we have learning in the morning and we have fun in the afternoon, including swimming at Dunbar High School. And that funding is because of the American Rescue Plan. That funding is part of being back and coming back and the recovery that's being led by the President of the United States. And you see what's happening. We're seeing a turning point as we have fought the virus. And now we're turning the corner for public education to help nurture and nourish our students and our families. But we needed the resources and we needed the safety guidance. And that is what President Joe Biden did from day one of him being president of the United States of America. And what we do with that in schools is that we move forward with powerful instruction, with project-based learning, with meaningful professional development like we're doing this week, and with the social emotional supports for students and for their families. And, and I can't say enough about how President Biden 
and how Dr. Biden and the whole administration has really helped us create this safe and equitable reopening of our public schools for in-person learning and investing in the safety measures we were teasing with the chancellor about the air purifiers that are in every single classroom in pain, but also the academic, the social, the emotional supports that put our public schools at the center of this recovery. Because as you know, as our members know, every single public school should be a place where parents want to send their kids, where educators want to work, and where kids thrive. So yeah, we have a lot of work to do. There's real inequities to tackle. There's real trauma and anxiety to address. But together, we can support each other because we also know there's an administration in Washington, D.C. that has our back and an education department that truly respects your voices as professionals in classrooms. And frankly, that starts with the First Lady. So I am really thrilled that Dr. Biden is joining us today. And you know, we're the AFT. We could have invited a lot of people to join us. We invited Dr. Biden. We wanted Dr. Biden, because, not only because she spent 13 years as a high school English and reading teacher. She also worked with kids with emotional disabilities um, at a psychiatric hospital, and she spent more years than all of that um, with our older kids in a community college environment. She is someone who walks the walk, often in heels, <laughs> and she understands us and she understands kids. I, I, I don't know if any of you have read the recent Vogue profile of the First Lady, but frankly, as someone who has been on school visits with her, I was struck by the way in which they talked about her school visits, how she rushes to the back of the room to see kids, how kids just sparkle when they see her. I saw it in Meriden with kids really, and teachers just loving that you were there. It, it gives, People see such hope in your smile and in your embrace, even the virtual embrace. And, and I know so many people introduce the First Lady as the woman who grades papers on a plane. I, I didn't know this until the last few days, that you once had a student who was a military interpreter in Afghanistan who had sent her paper in late because she went into labor. But also, Dr. Biden knows what it's like to teach on Zoom because she's been doing it all this year. <laughs> and as I said, she just beelines to people, to kids, to teachers, because she knows that lived experience. She has many jobs these days. She's the first lady, she's a mom, she's a teacher, she's the first first lady who's had a day job on top of all her other jobs. Um, but I want to just say this. She is as compassionate as a summer day is long. But she's also fierce. Fierce in the fight for our families, our kids, and for the recovery of America. The first day that she and the president were in the White House, she invited NEA President Becky Pringle and I to visit. Now, that was pretty cool, but that was pretty nerve-wracking. <laughs> but it told me something important, not only about Dr. Biden, but about the whole administration and how she understood and they understand the importance of education and the role of educators. The importance of education, not only to our kids, but to the nation's recovery and to education's role as a place that as the Pledge of Allegiance of the United States of America ends, as a place of recovery and of opportunity and justice for all. That understanding and that support is going to be a huge part of helping us meet our obligation 
to help students thrive and to see themselves as part and parcel of this recovery. And you are so important in that. And so without further ado, let me turn it over to our friend and our colleague, Dr. Jill Biden. Am I doing it right? Yeah. Did I get it right? I want to just make sure we got all that mitigation right. Thank you, Randy. All the way back in April of 2020, AFT released a plan to safely reopen schools. And since then, this organization has been as bold and tenacious about fighting for our nation's students and their families as you are in everything you do. You never give up on what matters. And I want to especially thank you for how much your work for the AFT has done to get educators and families vaccinated. As an educator, a union member, and first lady, I'm so grateful, Randy, for your leadership. Here in a classroom in Washington, DC, you can feel the optimism amid the worn books and the clean whiteboards, the sense of possibility. As educators, this is where we live out of faith, a belief that with patience and care, we can shape the next generation, help them build on everything that's come before to make our world better. Nearly a year ago, I spoke to the American people in another classroom, one where I used to teach at Brandywine High School. And though it was August, there were no freshly waxed floors to welcome the scuffs of new sneakers. Instead, classrooms had been left as they were when almost, when most schools suddenly shut down in March of last year. Questions weaved in and out of the shadows of each room. When would students return? How would online or hybrid learning work? How would we serve our students when we were surrounded by so much loss? Communities across the country wondered those same questions. But educators, we didn't wonder what to do. We got to work. The bus driver who drove Wi-Fi hotspots to neighborhoods with no connection. The teacher who retaught her lessons each night for a student who couldn't use the family computer during the day. Can you imagine teaching all day long and then teaching that one, teaching your whole lesson to one student at night? The cafeteria worker who spent long hours making sandwiches for hungry families. The counselor who took call after call from parents in tears, just trying to juggle it all. You adapted overnight, pushing through the chaos and the confusion, even as you worried about your own family's safety and education. You reimagined what a classroom could be. You carried families through the darkest year in modern history with patience, compassion, and care. America's students and families need champions like never before. And they found their champions in you. With all of my heart, thank you for being the heroes we needed. Last August, we made a promise to you that if Joe Biden became our president, classrooms would safely reopen and we would build our schools back better than before. You told us that you needed PPE and space so that kids could be socially distanced. You said that schools were struggling to pay salaries and that educator jobs were at risk. You talked about the challenges your students faced from parents losing jobs to families losing loved ones. 
Again and again, I heard, Jill, she never logs into class any longer. I know she's falling behind. Jill, he used to love learning, and now that, that spark is gone. We heard you, and we made sure that the first major piece of legislation from our administration, the American Rescue Plan, addressed those needs. It gave states the funds to make sure that schools had PPE, to make room for more, for more kids, and to ensure that they had the budgets to pay salaries. And we worked hard to create guidance and resources to reopen the doors to your schools. We provided critical funds to help you meet the academic, social, and emotional needs of your students who have been affected by COVID-19. And by our first 100 days, a majority of K through eight schools were open for full-time, in-person learning once again. But we're not done. In this pandemic, the challenges we so often see in our classrooms were brought into a bright light. And the whole nation saw just how much care and dedication it takes to be an educator. Didn't it feel like parents finally began to value what we do? Now we have the chance to move forward, to build on the opportunities ahead. It's time, not just to return to schools as they were, but rather, as Randy said to you in May, for a renaissance. The Biden-Harris administration told you that we were going to build back better, and we're working on a lot of ways to do just that. The American Families Plan, the Infrastructure Plan, our budget, and more. But, you know, rather than talk about dollar numbers and policy proposals, I want to talk about what that means for you. First of all, child care would be affordable. Kids would have the chance to go to a quality preschool at age three or four. And every student would be able to continue learning with free community college. Teachers, you would get paid more. Schools would have more nurses and counselors so that students have the support they need when they need it. We would have more teachers of color so that our educators reflect the beauty and diversity of the communities they, you serve. Our schools would have modern buildings with safe drinking water. All our students would have great opportunities to learn whether they live in a middle-class suburb or a low-income neighborhood in the city or a rural area. And there would be more community schools so that families would be able to get mental health support and social services from a place they know and trust. In just a few months, and with your help, our administration made sure that educators across the country have what they need to go back to schools safely. We fulfilled a commitment that was personal to me, making sure that our Secretary of Education was one of us, someone who has taught in public school. And I think I speak for all of us when I say that Miguel Cardona feels like a breath of fresh air and as we move forward, you and your students will continue to be one of our top priorities, not just in one legislative bill, but in everything we do, because we believe that education matters and that no one knows how to serve our students better than the people who work with them every day. To some people, a classroom like this may not look like much. The fluorescent lights, the felt walls, the ordinariness of it all. They don't know that what happens here is 
anything but ordinary. They don't know the way an idea can light up a pair of young eyes like magic. That teaching is an art, an alchemy, where black and white words can open a rainbow bridge to uncharted worlds. That our classrooms are part chrysalis, a place where students find pieces of themselves, hidden and waiting to be discovered, transforming them into something new. But we know, we know that this is what it's all about. The connections that we build here, the communities we create, and Joe knows that too. He knows that these humble desks and bulletin boards are more powerful than they look. He knows that you are magic makers, how hard you work. And he knows that it's our job to take away the obstacles you face and give you the support you need so you can do what you do best, teach guide, inspire, create, here in your classrooms, here surrounded by the students who need you so much, here where educators change lives and change our future. So I hope you can spend this summer reflecting and renewing for the year ahead. I hope you are excited to get back to the classrooms we love so much. I hope you're ready to stand side by side and build the future we want. I know I am, and I can't wait to see everything we do together. Thank you.